Well, hi, everybody. I'm Jackie. And I'm Ethan. And we are Plan Well, Live Well. Welcome to our show. Welcome and, to our show, everybody. Yeah. So happy Friday to everyone. So today's topic, we're going to be discussing life insurance. And we're going to demystify some of the pros and cons about life insurance and the importance of life insurance. So Ethan. And um, while we are discussing the very important topic of life insurance, we're also going to try to have some fun. And uh, while we are discussing these topics so that it's educational and informative to all. Uh, and so uh, check on and we're ready to go. Okay. So, so Jackie, yes. uh, let's, uh, let's start with, uh, you know, how does life insurance affect, affect us personally? And, uh, and uh, so tell me, do, you know, do you, how, how does life insurance affect your family? For me, I'm definitely using it as a planning tool for my family. Uh, I want to make sure that I leave a legacy behind. And most importantly, I don't want to leave a burden for my family. So I have several different uh, products in place, Ethan. I have a term insurance in place. I have whole life as well as a universal life. So uh, the purpose of all of those three, because they have specific uses, uh, us being industry uh, leaders and advisors, I know that the universal life um, uh, took into consideration uh, inflation costs. So I'm going to leave a little bit larger legacy for my daughter and hopefully my grandchildren that are to come. The just regular whole life policy that I have will cover my final expenses. And then my term insurance is in place because I have a mortgage. So I'm using that or I've earmarked that, uh, the benefits from that to cover the cost of my mortgage or any other expenses or taxes and things that I may have. So that's how I'm strategically using each one of those vehicles to help with my personal planning and the type of legacy that I want to leave behind. So, wow, that's right. a lot. Yeah, I put some thought into it. Now, Jackie, I mean, I want to ask you an important question. Did you do a lot of this planning, you know, before you became an advisor or did you do some of this planning uh, after you became an advisor? The term insurance, definitely when I purchased my home or I've purchased other homes in the past, so I knew the importance of it. The, and then the whole life was just the basic whole life that I had uh, with my employer and a uh, previous employer and then outside of that. The universal was something that uh, I understood once I got the education and training of being in this insurance industry, I knew the importance of it and the tools of all the things that it could do. And I said it was a must have to add to my retirement plan. Right. Well, same thing with me and you, you Great information. Hopefully, our viewers and our and our guests will will understand. But mm -hmm. same thing. Um, you know, I started planning with life insurance when I had my first child, and that was when I was thirty. I will not tell you how long ago that was. <laughs> uh, but when I was thirty, I I was married and I had a home. But uh, my wife and I, uh, we did not have life insurance at the time, and only decided to do our first planning. With life insurance when we had the kids uh, we realized that, that they depend on us and uh, it's it's an important tool to have uh, for their financial independence in the event that something would happen to us that's the, that's the reality that we live in uh, uh, not too many people want to talk about that reality but that's the reality that we live in bringing okay. a child into this world we we are responsible to provide for them especially if if they're minors now that being said, some of the planning that I've done uh, is uh, planning for myself and my wife uh, using uh, products like Universal Life. And also, I'm using these products to help accumulate savings for my for my children. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm accumulating it for their college or anything like that because I'm not funding it or I'm not putting in enough. Uh, but I am accumulating, and the goal is uh, it's time. I don't know what my kids' future is, if they're gonna be responsible professional children, but what I do know is that the cost of life insurance when you're young is cheap. That's right. And so I bought them life insurance when they were five or six years old and accumulating cash value in the policy. And my hope is maybe when they become mature adults, I will change the ownership because they're minors and I'm their parent, and so I own the policy. Uh, but when they're adults, I will gift them 
the policy and they could enjoy all the cash value in the policy. They can cash it out and buy a car if they want to, wow. or they could continue to accumulate for their future needs um, down the road. So that's some of the planning uh, that I've done. And uh, Do we have a video for our guest today, Jackie? We do have a video. So we're just going to simplify the conversation that uh, Ethan and I just had with this video. But before, before. we run the video, yes. we do want to recognize that today, Friday the 4th, February, Friday the 4th, is the first national holiday recognizing Make Your Child Smile Day today. Oh, okay. And uh, this event is recognized across the country, and uh, the participants in this event uh, provide free dental procedures and dental uh, checkups for children. There's about six or 7,000 dentists participating countrywide helping children get a dentist checkup. I know personally why this, this is important to me. When I was young, yeah. a long time ago, uh, I always had uh, teeth problems. Mm -hmm. I would uh, root canals and teeth extractions. I don't know, my teeth look good, but they were not good on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so um, as a kid, it was very important for my parents to be able to provide me these types of services. Uh, but certainly there are kids that don't have the same access. And this day uh, helps bring a smile to a kid. Well, that's, that's very noble for those who are dentists and uh, offering this type of service. Yes, I had two horror stories of the dentist. So um, I've gotten better over time. The easier, the no needles, that kind of thing. Yeah. So on our show, we're going to try to recognize uh, on Fridays, we're going to try to recognize the national holiday um, and bring that recognition to you, to our guests, so that we can all support the good cause. That's right. All right. So now, uh, Jackie, we'll, uh, we'll play the video. Life insurance at the workplace is part of an employer's group plan. But when you stopped working there, your coverage stopped too. Or perhaps you've had an individual term life insurance plan that has long since expired. Either way, you may be at the stage of life where you're thinking life insurance is no longer of much value. However, a life insurance policy can be a vital part of planning for retirement with many attractive benefits. Depending on the type of life insurance policy selected, it can offer you a guaranteed interest rate with a variety of tax advantages, the opportunity to participate in the upside of the stock market, with no downside market risk, access to the cash value as needed for any purpose, a supplement to your income whether you are working or receiving Social Security, proceeds for loved ones after you are gone that can be used for any reason, which is an important sum of money to help pay off a mortgage or other debt when you are no longer around. No matter what the future holds, life insurance can help bring peace of mind and financial security. Life insurance policies can build cash value over time and can be accessed through loans. Accumulate funds that can be accessed while living, giving extra assurance that funds are available in emergencies, or provide benefits that your family can rely on when you're gone. All the while generally avoiding income taxes on the value as it accumulates and when death benefits are received. What's the next step? Wow, that was a lot of great information. A quick, short, but impactful video. That's right. So, so let's talk about the video, Jackie. What you know? What some of the uh, points that you know jumped at you that maybe people are confused about, or you know, they don't understand um, some of that information? Because life insurance, you know, it's not a new thing, right? Yes. We see commercials on TV all the time, or uh, ads in the mail, and everybody seems to have it. And it, but it's 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 not all the same, right? That's right. Well, not everyone has it. Um, I just as a a noted fact, I did a quick Google search on GoFundMe. Close to half a million people are seeking some form of financial assistance to help pay for someone's final expense. I know, I see that. I see that. Uh, I read a lot of news articles, Yes. unfortunately, and almost every article, somebody says some, a family or a friend set up a GoFundMe page. That's right. And that's, uh, you know, that's a good, it's good, but it's tough 
for a family to have to depend on, uh, you know, the community, which is great that we have a great community that wants to help, but but it's tough that the family does have to depend on, on the community to help them uh, weather this financial storm after uh, a family member or a loved one uh, passes. passes. Um, so, so just yeah. think, imagine just a little bit of planning, what could, uh, how that can impact the family. So um, let's talk about the video. Some of the things that were pointed out to me that is, is real important that I've started to take advantage of, especially now that I'm an advisor, is the guaranteed returns. There are some tax advantages, um, the access to the cash value. So if by chance, if I needed to weather a certain financial storm, I have access to cash value. Um, I know that it could, uh, as you and I plan for retirement, or folks plan for retirement, at just a little bit of planning, we have we could supplement our income. So not only we may have a pension, we may have a 401k, we may even have our social security income, but a couple more dollars added on to that income. What an impact that could make uh, to our monthly uh, income. And then- um, Well, that's kind of the same thing. So some of the points that I came across then, uh, as I kind of unpack this video is that the video implied that most people think of life insurance as a death benefit. Okay. I think you mentioned the income and interest rate and stuff like that. And that's true because life insurance does, it is designed to provide a death benefit at the time of your passing or someone's passing, but life insurance, not all life, not all types of life insurance, but there is a type of life insurance that accumulates within itself, almost like a retirement account on a tax deferred basis. And if you accumulate sufficient money in there, you could, if you have a need, take lifetime living benefits. This is what I'm saying, not death benefits, living benefits. So that's some nice features and, and hopefully that demystifies uh, that not all life insurance policies only pay when you pass. Some of them pay while you're living, okay? Now, I also, one of the things that I think I unpacked was that it implied that a lot of people have employer-sponsored yes. life insurance. And so that's always good, and um, it's good to have. A, it's a great benefit that you get from your employer. But the problem with it is that when you quit retire, get laid off, get fired. That insurance doesn't come with you. Not all the time. Not all the time. That's right. It does depend on your benefits at work, what kind of arrangement they made with the insurance company. It's not the insurance company. It is the benefits coordinator at your employer that said, hey, when Mr. John retires, gets laid off, gets fired or quits, he also loses his life insurance. So that could happen when you're 60. Yes. That could happen when you're 50. And what happens is when you are, I'm kind of going a little bit too much detail here. Uh, it's important to, to know this real quick is that when you go and you get a job, you can be sick and you could have um, pre-existing conditions. Your employer will still um, take you and give you life insurance. But then when you quit, retire, get laid off, uh, you have pre-existing conditions. It's yes. very difficult to purchase private insurance. That's right, outside of the, yeah, at the time. Wow, and it could be costly too, because under a group coverage plan, we both know that those costs, those costs are controlled uh, with the group coverage plan through the employer. Right. Private insurance, not only to your point, of passing the health questions with pre-existing health conditions, but also the premium could be slightly higher. That's right. That's right. So really good information, short but impactful video. As I said in the beginning, we're also going to try to have some fun with yes, this right. uh, because you know, learning through fun is just another way to do it. That's right. So let's let's play a game. Uh, Jackie, you're going to be the guest today. Oh, wow. Uh, we will have our shows. We'll have some special guests today. Special guest is myself and Jackie. That's right. So Jackie is going to play a game today. We're going to learn and play. And yes, we're going to learn and play. 
All right, so we're going to boot up this game here. Oh, wow, look at that. Light board game. Light okay. board game, okay? okay? Here, okay, Jackie. So we're going to we're gonna maybe get, uh, let's, we'll keep a tally here. And here's how this game is. This is like, like a Jeopardy game, uh, but it's not Jeopardy. It's the light board game. And the way the rules are is we're going to ask you about five or seven questions. Well, you're going to pick a topic about five to seven questions. Okay. And your winnings, uh, say, will be $3 or $7 or $10. Uh, we will donate those proceeds to a charity. Very noble. Um, and then we'll double that. So if your score is seven, we'll donate 14 uh, in your name. Okay. And then we'll play another spin spin the wheel game where we'll able to uh, choose a charity to uh, to donate these these awesome. proceeds to. Okay. Right. So it should be fun. Right. So Jackie, uh, go ahead. All right. Life work game. Okay. Let's do topic three. Universal. Topic three for how much, Jackie? Two dollars. Yep, your point is there. Two dollars. Two dollars. Okay. So the amount of money the insurance company pays to a beneficiary when a person insured under the policy dies. Okay. I'll read that question again. The okay. amount of money the insurance company pays to a beneficiary when a person insured under the policy dies. Uh, that would be um, a beneficiary claim. Okay. Oh. oh, death benefit. Is that it? Okay. 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 Yay. All right. So, I got that right. Yep. Okay. All right. Next question. Okay. Let's do, um, since we're talking about beneficiaries, let's do uh, beneficiaries for $1. Okay. Beneficiaries for $1. In addition to being uh, designated as a primary or contingent, Beneficiaries can also be named as either blank or blank. Oh, Ooh, that's a toughie. Yes. Um, okay, so in addition to the designation of one Oh, okay. Uh, what is per capita or per sterbies? All right, let's see if, what the answer is. Oh, revocable or irrevocable. Can okay. we talk about that for just a second? Um, sure, let's talk I about that. Known that. I should have known that. talk about that. So, so most people know that they can be uh, primary, mm -hmm. which is which was they can be primary. Yes. And or then a contingent. contingent is the person that's second in line to the yes. primary. But then we also just learned that you could have you could be a primary revocable beneficiary or a primary irrevocable beneficiary. Continues well. So what does that mean? So revocable. Revocable means that the owner of the policy, say I'm the owner of the policy mm -hmm. and you're my beneficiary. Okay. If you're a revocable beneficiary at any time, I can remove you ah. and add on somebody else. That's right. And you might hear the stories on TV all the time. I'll remove my ex-wife and put on my new wife and you know, take my kids out of the will, take my kids out of the policy from my deathbed. Well, when it's revocable, yes. uh, I can do whatever I want with my beneficiaries. I'm the owner. But once I said irrevocable, okay. even though I'm the owner with full power of the contract, I said that not even I can remove the beneficiary. Okay. That's called irrevocable. And sometimes people do that to protect the beneficiary so that no one else, like a power of attorney, could remove the beneficiary. Or with someone as a trustee of an estate. Or a trustee of okay, an estate. Okay, got it. Okay? okay, so when you designate your primary or your contingent beneficiary irrevocable, no one could remove the beneficiary. Not the insurance company, not the owner, not a power of attorney, not a trustee, absolutely nobody. For the beneficiary who's irrevocable to be removed, mm -hmm. the beneficiary themselves must agree to be removed. Ah, now that was a complex answer. I, I Hopefully everybody got that. that yeah. And and we can always talk about that topic again. You know, we will uh, boot up our chats, we'll have our emails, and, and anytime there's a topic of interest, uh, please send us an email, a topic, uh, um, 
uh, even scheduling a, a consultation with us, a free consultation with us about specific topics. Uh, you can do that as well by going to our YouTube channel, into our bio, and going into our calendar link there to schedule a, a, co a free consultation about any topic, really. So good, good thing to unpack, right? That's right. All right. So one more. So we got. Uh, so you got that one wrong, Jackie. But we learned a lot. That's we did. So now we have three more questions, Jackie. Three more questions. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to topic one term for two dollars. Topic one term for two dollars. Should go for the big bucks. Okay, all right. I didn't realize I could skip down. Right, yes, because we're we're uh, we're uh, we're uh, going to be donating the money. That's right. All right, so all right. Let's go for the big bucks. Okay. okay. The amount of money the insurance company pays to the beneficiary. I think you already did that one, Jackie. I did. Okay, so that was topic one. Uh, uh, we're not we're not keeping good yeah. score. Question two. You already did that, Jackie. Okay. okay. So let's let's uh, let's uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So to your point, let's go down here to whole life for four dollars, please. Wow. Whole life for four dollars. The payment to the insurance company for insurance coverage is called What is premium? All right. What Topic is two. There you go. Topic two. Topic two. Question four. And we need to correct that, not to say four hundred, to say four dollars. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, we Good got job. that right. Good job, Good job. Jackie. Uh -huh. All right, uh -huh. all right. So let's got a couple of more questions. All right, so let's go to beneficiary for five dollars. Wow, now we're talking. I think we're talking. Yeah. The person named in a policy, in a life insurance policy, as the recipient of the insurance money in the event of the insured person's death. What is beneficiary? What is beneficiary? Let's see. Wow. wow. That was good. Okay, so topic five. All right, so one more question, Jackie. Okay, so Woo! let's see. I know. Let's do universal for five dollars. Universal for five dollars. Okay. This is a long one. So I'm gonna okay. try to read it slowly. Okay. Provides lifelong protection and the ability to accumulate cash value on a tax deferred basis similar to assets in most retirement and college savings accounts, will remain in force for as long as you continue to pay your required premium. The main types are whole, universal, and variable. Wow. Uh, so it's asking a type of policy provides lifelong protection and the ability to accumulate cash value on a tax-deferred basis similar to assets in most retirement accounts and college accounts will remain in force for as long as you continue to pay your required premium the main types are whole universal and variable i'm going to say accumulated cash value okay. what is accumulated cash value let's see what the answer is oh permanent, permanent life, life insurance. insurance okay i didn't understand the question so good game jackie uh -huh. And you had one twelve dollars. Okay. Okay. You uh -huh. won twelve dollars. As a whole. Our thing. show uh -huh. will double that to twenty four dollars, and we will donate that to a charity. Wonderful. And now we're going to play a game. Are we going to do another game? Okay. Yes. Right. Now we're going to play a game where we will be able to going to benefit from choose my the charity. That is correct. Choose the charity. That is correct. So we're going to spin the wheel. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to spin the wheel, and the charities are the Alzheimer's Association, okay. uh, muscular dystrophy. Yes, near dear to my heart. Your choice. Okay. Oh, I can choose which charity. Okay. Fill okay. abundance. Oh. Local food bank here. Mm -hmm. uh, a special person. Wow. Okay. And uh, double it up. Oh. So that's your choice. Okay. So we are already. You won twelve. We already doubled it up because that's what the show will do for you. That's twenty four. And if you hit double it up, we'll double it up to forty eight dollars. Wow. Okay. To the to the your choice. All right. So let's play the game. Good luck. Let's spin the wheel. And it goes to a special person. Special person. Okay. All right. So, so Jackie, uh, 
do you want to share with us the, the special person that you want to um, donate this to? Yes, uh, that uh, person uh, would be in honor of, of my friend Malcolm and my friend William. So uh, William uh, is pre-deceased now and he suffered with muscular dystrophy. So uh, in his honor, there are other kids from the Muscular Dystrophy Association that are still living that could have benefit families could benefit from that money. So that's where I would like those dollars to go to. Great, Jackie. That's a great cause. And we will uh, donate the money in your name from our show. That's right. Thank you for playing. Thank you. All right. So as we are wrapping up, uh, we will uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the learning and the fun. As we are wrapping up, we are going to introduce our um, guest for next week. And our guest for next week, Pamela Woodrow, is Henry M. Bolsky, Living Peace Institute. He is an author, he's a yogi, he's a two-time TED Talk uh, instructor. Uh, there's so many wonderful things that I could say about Henry. Um, and he's an attorney, he's a mediator. So it, that's going to be an interesting conversation with him. He's got a lot of information and we'll be talking to Henry about our plan well segment. And we'll also be talking to Henry about our live well segment. And it'll be interesting as he is involved a lot of many different things and he's uh, very successful at it. And hopefully uh, you'll enjoy him on the show. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And uh, go to our YouTube channel, Plan Well, Live Well Now. Click on the calendar link in the description and uh, book a free complimentary consultation. That's right. So thank you, everybody, for watching. We, uh, Ethan and I want you to plan well and live well. Thank you. <laughs>